click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, welcome back to the subject of Machine Design 1. In the recent video, in the recent lecture, we have seen how the stresses or the combined stresses do act on the body and which are the formula or empirical relations that we need to use in order to solve the numerical. In today's session and the next session, we will be working on two numerical, two such numerical where combined loadings are given. So the combined stresses will be acting on them for the fluctuating nature of course and that is how we will be solving the numerical. So let us proceed with the first one. Students, you can see this numerical on the screen. Let me quickly read it out for you for the better understanding. It says that a machine component undergoes 2D stresses. They have clearly mentioned that the stresses here are 2D in nature. They have given the tensile stress in X direction that is varying from 40 to 100 Newton per millimeter square. They have given the tensile stress in Y direction that is again varying from 10 to 18 Newton per millimeter square. Now it is mentioned that at same variation frequency that means if the variation that is taking place in the basic value of 40 is 20 that means the value will become 60 the next value or the next cycle value will become 60 in that case this will also be increased by 20 and it will become 30 so that is how the frequency of variation is happening also if this is happening in few seconds the same seconds will be utilized for the variation in this particular so that the frequency or the phase lag will be minimum in both the cases because they will be changing or altering with the same frequency the next thing is endurance limit the corrected value of endurance limit is given to 70 newton per millimeter square students we have already solved the numerical where the corrected value of endurance limit were considered based on different factors right correction factors to be precise and that is how the value is already given so we no, need not solve it again separately so it is 270 newton per millimeter square the next value is given the ultimate tensile strength of this particular material that is given 660 Newton per millimeter square. Now the question here is we need to find out the factor of safety where all these components are given. We have been given various values of the stresses including its yield limit and the ultimate point. Using all of them we need to find out factor of safety for this component. Let us proceed. So students let us solve this problem. We have been using these equations very frequently and we know that the mean value is nothing but the average value of maximum and the minimum limit. Whereas the amplitude value is the average value of the differences between those. So let us find them out. Let us start with the mean value in x direction. The formula is very obvious. It is the average of their addition the maximum and the minimum value we have been given in the x direction value between 40 to 100 and that's why this value comes out to be the minimum value in our case is 40 and the maximum value in our case is 100. The average value comes out to be 70 Newton per millimeter square and that's why the mean value of stress in x direction becomes 70 Newton per millimeter square. Let us proceed with the amplitude value in x direction. It gives me the value the maximum minus minimum. Maximum in our case is 100 minus minimum is 40. Now this gives me the value 30 Newton per millimeter square. Now students, we can see that in y direction similar formulae are given, just the variations are different. So let us consider those variations and solve this problem. So the variation we have been given, the minimum value is 10 and the maximum value they have given is 80. After solving, we will get the value 45 Newton per millimeter square in x direction. Whereas the value here comes out to be 35 Newton per millimeter square. So these are the basic values required and we have found them out. Let's move ahead with the formulae. 
Now these are the formulae which we have seen in the last lecture where the mean stress in x and y direction is given by this particular expression. Let's substitute the values. In x direction the mean stress given is 70 square minus the mean square root value into in y direction mean value. The y direction mean value is 45. After solving this particular thing we will get sigma mean is equal to somewhere around 61.44 Newton per millimeter square. On the same lines we can make up this expression for sigma a value. Let's substitute the values. After solving this expression we will get So that is how the mean value and the amplitude values are found out for this particular given expression or the problem. Let's move ahead with finding the angle of slope or the slope given by this particular expression. We know that sigma is plotted on the y-axis and sigma m is plotted on x-axis. So whenever the slope is to be found out, we can use this particular expression. Let's substitute the values. Of course, it is going to be a constant proportion and there we can find out the theta. So whatever value comes for there, the tan, you know, the tan inverse of that particular value gives me the theta. So in our case, theta comes out to be somewhere around 28.09 degree. So that is what the slope of this particular line will be. Let's move ahead and use the Goodman's criteria. Before that, let us plot this simple graph. We know that sigma m is plotted on this, sigma a is plotted on this. Like we have already seen that there is no need to scale up this model. So it's a simple understanding is sufficient. We have been given sigma e dash value. We have been given sigma ut value. Let us draw a line which is connecting this two and there is a line at angle theta which we have recently found out. So basically this is nothing but the slope value of a sigma a and sigma m. The intersection of both of them because in this particular problem both of these expressions are satisfied. So the coexisting point for both of them is the point i. So to obtain desired values at intersection point i let us consider and solve the following equations. Now we have discussed that these two are already the known. Now since we are using Goodman's criteria, this is the equation that represents the Goodman's line. So in that case, sigma e dash and sigma ut are the constant values, whereas these two are the variables. As of now at point i, which is the intersection point, we are going to find them. And that's why they become sigma a i divided by the endurance limit point given in our case is 270 Newton per millimeter square. This as I said is also a, a variable so it's an unknown factor whereas the ultimate strength given is 660 is equal to 1. Let me call it my expression number 1 because these are the two unknowns that I have. Now second thing is on this line whatever point you take at that particular point the slope will remain the same because it's a straight line. So we can definitely say that sigma a divided by sigma m which is our previous slope value has to be equal to the proportion of sigma a at point i and sigma m at point i. And that's why let's call it sigma m i and sigma a i for better understanding. And hence the ratio comes out to be tan theta. So whatever the ratio comes out tan theta is somewhere around 0.534. And let me call this expression number 2. Now we have two expressions and if you see this properly, both the unknowns that we have 
आर सेम इन बोथ द इक्वेशन सो वी कैन सॉल्व देम साइमल्टेनियसली सो आफ्टर सॉल्विंग इक्वेशन वन एंड टू साइमल्टेनियसली वी विल गेट सिग्मा ए एट आई एंड सिग्मा एम एट आई इट्स समवेयर अराउंड वन फिफ्टी टू पॉइंट एट एट न्यूटन पर मिलीमीटर स्क्वेयर and this one as 286.89 newton per millimeter square so these are the two values which we have been looking for but this is not the final answer we need to find out the factor of safety for this point let me quickly revise that this particular value represents the mean value of stress and the amplitude value of stress at the point i and i is the intersection point of two lines which represent the relationship between these two particular factors the relation that is the slope between the amplitude stress and the mean stress of the given problem as well as the relation that intersects the point endurance limit and the ultimate point by means of goodman's criteria so that each and every point lying after this is not safe region every point lying on this line and inside this line is the safe point of this particular design in the last session factor of safety will be given by the actual value divided by the given value or the possible value a so let us substitute the values and the value that we have found out right now is which upon solving we will get the expression is somewhere around 4.66 and that's why the factor of safety desired in our case becomes 4.66 so the given factors and given values of the material properties we have come to an conclusion that using goodman's criteria the value of factor of safety comes out to be 4.66 in our case so there are problem ends in the next problem will be demonstrating a different method or a different approach where additional stresses like torsional shear stresses are also given and how to find out or how to incorporate the factor of safety for the safe design thank you so much for watching this video if you like this video please subscribe to ikeda thank you